A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies. A very warm welcome to all for joining us here, us here today at the UNFCCC COP26 Climate Change Conference at the UAE Pavilion. But I also wanted to welcome all of you who are joining us here online on the Khalifa Award Report Bridging Boundaries report launch. We also have a subtitle called One Ecosystem Approaches for Bioregional Collaboration in the MENA region. And we are meeting in the pivotal moment in the human history and the history of this planet. COP26 opening statements from the UNFCCC Secretariat, the IPCC, the World Leader Summits could not be more explicit how serious the situation is. The Prime Minister of Barbados mentioned that two degree warming is a death sentence for the people of Barbados and small islands, whereas the IPCC report mentioned that the MENA region would see increase of temperature up to eight degrees Celsius. We are here today to discuss nature-based solutions on the Nature Day itself, and in particular, we would like to focus on date palm and date palm oasis ecosystems. So it's a pleasure to introduce a panel and, and the speakers of today. We're going to have a, a, a video link and a recorded message from Professor Dr. Abdulhab Zaid, who is an agricultural advisor to the United Arab Emirates Minister of Presidential Affairs. He's also a Secretary General of the Khalifa International Date Palm Award for Agricultural Innovation and a Goodwill Ambassador to the FAO. And I had the privilege to co-edit a report with Dr. Zaid. I'm also delighted to welcome in the UAE Pavilion delegates from the UNFCCC. We have um, Ms. Karina Larsen, who is a Global Operations and Knowledge Manager at the Climate Technology Center Network CTCN, which is a part of technology mechanism under the convention, and I'm sure we're going to learn more about it. A warm welcome to Dr. Paul Desanke, who is a manager from the Adaptation Division of the UNFCCC Secretariat. We also honor to have Dr. Josef Nassif contribution uh, to the report, who is a director of the Adaptation Program. And on the other side of the panel, uh, a warmest welcome to my colleagues from the Khalifa International Date Palm Award, Agricultural Innovation, who came all the way from Abu Dhabi, Ms. Sarah Mohammed Ismail Nasser, who is a project coordinator, and engineer Imad Samad, who is media coordinator. So without further ado, I would like to uh, offer the screen uh, to Dr. Abdulhalab Zaid uh, for, for the short video introduction. جائزة خليفة الدولية لنخيل التمر والزجاج الزراعي تشارك ضمن الوفد الرسمي لدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة الذي ترأسه وزارة التغير المناخي والبيئة ومكتب المبعوث الخاص لدولة الإمارات للتغير المناخي لمؤتمر الدول الأطراف في اتفاقية الأمم المتحدة الإطارية بشأن تغير المناخ ما يعرف بالكوب 26 والذي طبعا كما تعلمون تستضيفه مدينة كراسكو بإسكتلندا خلال الفترة من 31 أكتوبر إلى 12 نوفمبر وسأتي مشاركة الجائزة في قمة العمل المناخي بناء على توجيهات معالي الشيخ نهيان مبارك أن نهيان وزير تسامح والتعايش رئيس مجلس أمناء الجائزة وذلك حرصا من معاليه على تلبية رؤية القيادة الرشيدة فيما يتعلق بالتغير المناخي عبر نقل المعرفة العلمية المستجدة في هذا المجال وتمكين العاملين في قطاع زراعة النخيل وإنتاج التمور وذلك وفق أفضل الممارسات الدولية من خلال مواكبة هذا الحدث العالمي وذلك لما لشجرة نخيل التمر من أهمية ودور يمكن أن تلعبه في التقليل من الآثار السلبية للتغير المناخي من خلال امتصاص وتخزين غاز ثاني أكسيد الكربون من الغلاف الجوي للكوكب استعدادا لهذا المؤتمر الدولي فإن الأمان العمل الجائزة 
عملت على إعداد تقرير علمي الأول من نوعه بالعالم بعنوان تجسير الحدود يركز التقرير على كيف يمكن للتعاون الإقليمي الحيوي لتحويل صناعة نخيل التمر إلى نموذج ناجح للاقتصاد الدائري وبالتوازي مع عقد الأمم المتحدة لاستعادة النظام البيئي في الفترة 2021-2030 حيث تم تعطير التقرير ضمن خمسة محاور رئيسية هي أولا الناس الكوكب الازدهار السلام والشركات وهي كما تعلمون تشكل محاور خطة التنمية المستدامة التي أقرتها الأمم المتحدة علما أن تقرير هذا التقرير هو عبارة عن دعوة لا. لعمل الهيئات الإدارية وقادة الصناعات في العالم للتعرف على أهمية شجرة نخيل التمر لا سيما في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال إفريقيا واستخدامها ك كنقطة انطلاق لإحداث تغير إيجابي لكل من الناس والكوكب وقام هذا التقرير أيضا بإعداد عفوا قام بإعداد هذا التقرير 46 خبيرا من 24 دولة بالعالم نحن في جائزة خليفة الدولية لنخيل التمر بدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة فنحن نرى بأن شجرة نخيل التمر هي بمثابة مفتاح لعالم أكثر استدامة لأن هذا التقرير يقدم لنا فرصة لإعادة بناء الاقتصاد والمجتمع بطريقة أكثر استدامة لا. التي تطلعت التي تلبي صناعات المجتمع الدولية حيال هذا التغير المناخي والتقرير أيضا هو أكثر من مجرد بصيص من الأمل خصوصا إذا عرفنا بأن كل شجرة نخيل تمر تمتص 200 كيلو جرام من السي او 2 بالسنه وبالتالي فهي تلعب دورا ايجابيا في معادله التغير المناخي. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Zaid, the Secretary General of the Khalifa International Date Palm Award. Uh, from myself, I would like to say uh, just two, a few words on, on, on the context of the report uh, as co-editor uh, to let you know that the report is downloadable for free from a website bridgingboundaries.world and for today's discussions I wanted to bring topics on bioregional collaboration which is a um, bioregional aspect on the, of nature of 20 uh, MENA region countries that share similar climate zone similar natural resources and similar cultural characteristics. That's one aspect of it. And another one is a, a, an issue of low and tech, uh, uh, low technologies and high technologies, how we could connect uh, traditional technologies, for example, with more contemporary technologies for new jobs and, and more sustainable uh, models. We have 46 contributors from 21 countries. Uh, I'm really proud that we managed to attract also free Rio conventions. So apart from the UNFCCC, we have contributions from Secretary Generals of CBD and UNCCD as well. But in a concept of one ecosystem and nature-based solutions, there is a diversity of scales where we could explore nature-based solutions and the diversity of data palm itself. From ecosystem, uh, 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 ecosystem-based adaptation, biodiversity, hugely important food security, um, food supply chains. We can also touch on issues to do with territorial integration and oasis cities, urbanization and nature, how we could create self-sustainable cities. Um, Biocircle economy principles that are hugely popular, popular nowadays, they've been in practice in the region for around 7,000 years. Uh, adaptation of technology. So in other words, there is an entire macrocosm uh, of possible nature-based solutions through date palm ecosystems and to discuss possible mechanism for implementation at the global scale, I would like to give a floor to Dr. Paul de Sanke, who is a manager res responsible subdivision at the adaptation division of UNFCCC to tell us something about national adaptation plans. So Dr. de Sanke, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, the convention has a financial mechanism that supports countries to prepare national adaptation plans in a very locally driven manner, uh, taking into account the local uh, situations in the countries. Uh, ecosystem obviously underpin uh, a lot that, that happens in the country, and ecosystems do not uh, restrict themselves to national boundaries. So in that sense, water underground, uh, water on the surface, uh, and ecosystems on, on the surface as well, are common across regions, and the MENA region is an example of, of where the climate is quite similar and the ecosystem similar. So it does warrant uh, a lot of regional collaboration in terms of projects and activities to implement that. So we have funding under the Green Climate Fund where countries can access money to prepare these plans and then develop projects to implement priorities that they have identified. Very nice, thank you very much. Thanks. That's very, hugely interesting. And another aspect that is really relevant for date palm uh, cultivation is technology. Uh, thought about in the broadest possible way, technology in the context of agriculture, technology in the context of technology transfer, and we're really delighted to have with us um, Ms. Karina Larsen uh, from CTCN. Um, we would like to hear a few words from you on technology mechanism and the opportunities that the CTCN framework can offer for the bioregional collaboration. Please, Thank the floor you, is Sandra. yours. Um, I'm happy to have this opportunity today and um, the Climate Technology Center and Network, as you mentioned before, is part of the, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change's technology mechanism. So we work in alignment with the, with the financial mechanism at the same time. And we um, were created through the COP negotiations in order to provide both access to technologies and knowledge about technologies to developing countries. And we serve um, across a broad range of sectors, both adaptation, so everything from uh, water, agriculture, ecosystem restoration, disaster preparedness, to a, um, a broad array of uh, mitigation areas, such as energy, of course, but industry, transport, buildings, waste, those kinds of things. And the way that we're able to, to deliver services across such a broad spectrum is through mobilizing a global network of over 650 companies, research centers, uh, financial, financial institutions around the world. And so we're able to, to bring these resources together and provide um, both technical assistance, capacity building, and knowledge sharing activities um, to countries. And requests can come to us from the local level, from organizations, um, all the way up to the national level of governments. And so in this way, we um, really try to be responsive to countries' needs, and especially in alignment with their technology needs assessments, um, but also their, their NDCs, of course. Thank you very much. Um, so this is really interesting to have examples of global cooperation uh, and global mechanisms that uh, the MENA region countries could connect to uh, for further implementation of their own national plans uh, through bioregional collaboration. I would like to now give a floor to uh, the Khalifa International Date Palm Award for Agricultural Innovation because this is a regional body that in a wonderful way connects best practices uh, on date palm uh, uh, and date palm technologies throughout the region and I think its role is hugely important. So I want to give a floor to Ms. Sarah Mohamed Ismaili Nasir uh, uh, and the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you so much for the great uh, introduction. So Khalifa International Award uh, for date palm and agriculture innovation is based in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, um, where it emphasizes the leadership of the UAE in the agriculture and date palm sectors and it's, uh, its importance in this area and the at the global level as well as contributing to the motivation of experts, um, sci scientists, researchers and farmers to innovate for development of agriculture sector which in return contributes to providing solutions and means to meet the world's food uh, needs. So Khalifa International Award is an annual award which consists of five categories of a total amount of one million US dollars um, to award of course outstanding scientists, day palm producers and influential figures and organizations um, who significantly contributed to the development of the agriculture sector and day palm research in general. Uh, so over the past 13 years Khalifa International Award completed 13 sessions with 1,310 candidates and 44 winners from the MENA region. And uh, speaking of the international um, 
participation, we have 1,648 candidates from across the world with a total of 80 winners. And that was just a brief about the Khalifa International Award uh, on the regional uh, level, actually. Thank, Thank you. you. So. And, and congratulations uh, to you, the entire team, Dr. Zaid, for an amazing work and important work that you're doing on, on date palm cultivation regionally. So I would like to uh, open the floor for the Q&A. And, and the question uh, to my distinguished panel is probably the future of other national adaptation plans and bioregional collaboration. How do you see a, a, a real opportunity within the negotiation framework, within the work you do here at the COP, how these 20 countries could come together uh, under one umbrella of uh, nature-based transformative solutions for that region through the mechanisms that you represent. Could you, could you maybe offer us some recommendations on that? One thing we're seeing is a lot of collaboration in, in fairly large projects that multiple countries implement together because some of the solutions that are required do require a su substantial amount of input to transform how livelihoods operate at the national level uh, all the way to the regional level. People are so connected in terms of their supply chains and unemployment and when people are displaced they, they tend to go to, to, their, to their neighbors and so forth. Uh, so climate change does require extremely large thinking in terms of, of the medium and the long term. Uh, I think that we have to stop thinking about next year but, but rather 10, 20, 50 years from now and start to plan ahead in order to anticipate how uh, different ecosystems might collapse or other new s ecosystems might emerge that could support new livelihoods. So, so there's a lot of potential I think to think at, outside of the box and actually create the future that we would like to see. Thank you very much. That's very optimistic. And I personally believe in date palm ecosystems and obviously the team as well. So that's a that's a great opportunity. Um, uh, in the Arab world, the role of women cannot be underestimated. And uh, I would like to uh, ask a question about the, the, the gender question, about the role of women uh, uh, as drivers of innovation. And uh, uh, to, to Dr. Kalina Larsen, please kindly let us know your thoughts sure. on this year. Yeah, I mean, um, when we talk about technology, man, many people think of it as being gender neutral. But in fact, uh, technology, um, you know, the, the way that it's developed, uh, the user is al always should be at the forefront in thinking about development and, and, and using of the technologies. And we see um, in, in so many countries that, uh, that the innovation at the ground level is, is really just driving so much of a new technology. And um, we work very closely with the women and gender constituency of the, of the convention. And each year uh, we hold an awards program where we seek to identify local organizations working on climate change solutions, very innovative solutions, but also with a very strong gender component. And, um, and these we feel really have a lot to share with other countries and so we try to really create more visibility for them and to help them upscale and share information about their projects. So to create in a sense a, a global network of this type of information um, on gender because uh, it really, um, we find that the more diversity that you can put into the, the innovation process, so not only looking at gender but also with working with young people, the more diversity, the, the better the ideas that are coming out of the process. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. So undoubtedly we will endeavor uh, to, to engage uh, 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 women uh, from the Arab world as well mm -hmm. uh, in the future dialogues. Um, the technology transfer uh, in the context of date palm uh, is quite complex uh, and I think we have here um, aspect of low technologies that we know worked for environment for around 7,000 years. And, 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 there, and there is an emergence of new technologies such as blockchain and AI that we know we can connect to. But these low tech needs research and development and they are not really market ready. We know they work, they prove the test of time, but they're not market ready. What would be your words of wisdom on, on research and development funding that is hugely needed to uh, understand why they work, how they worked, and then upscaling them at the, at the regional scale? What, what would your thoughts on that? Shall I go yes. first? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so happy to. So, Indeed, uh, traditional technologies and knowledge should not be overlooked because they have such a huge potential and they, they have worked for years for a reason. And so we want to look at these and, um, and really to figure out the best ways to incorporate them with the existing technologies and those that are, that are coming now in the pipeline. 
Um, and so I think that, that that's very important that you, you highlight this issue. And um, I think also that uh, we want to be able to really raise these to scale. But to do that, you, you need the research, you need the feasibility studies. And, uh, and so um, I can say, at least within the, the, the CTCN, there is, um, there is a possibility to ask for this type of assistance too. We're not working with just hard technologies, but everything that supports the technology development and, and implementation and broad scale uh, deployment. And so, um, so in fact, uh, most of the requests that we receive from countries are in the area of helping to access needed information and research to be able to then you know, build the work from that point on. Yeah. Very interesting, yeah. that's very optimistic. And um, today is a nature day, uh, but I, because I am an architect, I always think that we need to talk about nature and urbanization at the same time. Uh, at the same day, perhaps. And within the national adaptation plans, uh, uh, do you see combination of nature and urbanization or sustainable development, uh, sustainable cities development, together with agriculture combined together? Do you see that coming through? Uh, We've seen a lot of examples of, of, of how nature is used to actually manage things like urban flooding, for instance, where uh, there are infrastructure built in the cities to actually uh, navigate floodwaters away from cities and so forth, either through uh, soakways and so forth, or parks and so on. So there's a very tight connection between ecosystems and what they're able to do in order to regulate uh, both air pollution and, and water and so forth, and provide the spaces that people need to relax and then to refresh and so forth. Uh, so, so there's a very nice way of, of, of envisioning a future that, that's sustainable, that's healthy and so forth, but by creating uh, cities that are able to replicate what we used to, to see in the past, where people enjoy nature. And, and Absolutely, yes, yeah, thank you. So I, I wanted to also give a floor to my colleagues from Khalifa International Award. Uh, any comments, any reflections you would like to share? Yes, thank you, Dr. Sara. Uh, يعني باسم الأمان العام لجائزة خليفة الدولية لنخيل التمر والابتكار الزراعي وأمينها العام الدكتور عبدالهاب زايد نشكر الأخوة المتحدثين جميعا على ما تفضلوا به كما نشكر فريق عمل جناح دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة المشارك في قمة العمل المناخي في جلاسكو سكوتلاند على هذه الاستضافة كما نؤكد على الأهمية الكبيرة لشجرة نخيل التمر بصفتها أحد عناصر معادلة الأمن الغذائي على مستوى العالم ونؤكد أيضا أن شجرة نخيل التمر لها دور استراتيجي في التقليل من الآثار السلبية للتغير المناخي على مستوى العالم فبالتالي يمكن أن تلعب دور إيجابي في هذا الموضوع بالتالي لها دور نعول عليه كثيرا في الأمان العامة لجائزة وفي كل الدول المنتجة للتمر على مستوى العالم شكرا دكتورة ساندرا شكرا شكرا إنجي إيمات we have a, a concluding video uh, that is going to tell you uh, uh, something about date palm in, in a broader context and uh, I would kindly request for the video to be on
Thank you. Thank you very much to the panel for joining us here today. Thank you to all of you who join us online. The UAE has just opened a Dubai Expo exhibition under the title Connecting Minds and Creating the Future, which is hugely optimistic. And I would like to end on an optimistic note uh, spoken here by uh, Patricia Espinoza, Executive Secretary of UNFCCC, who said that success is entirely possible. And we do have a plan of action, and that plan of action is the Paris Agreement. Thank you for joining us. Please download the report. It's a great read, beautifully designed. And thank you for listening. Goodbye. Mm. Thank you.